Want to know my personal reason why I'm not buying an electric car anytime soon? It's not because of the electric motor. It's not because it weighs almost two times heavier than a standard car. And it's not because of boring EV designs that make them all look like dolphins. Here's the thing. The biggest problem is the EV battery. Mainly, the driving range and how long it takes to fully charge an EV. Until EV makers solve these two things, you won't be seeing me owning an electric car. Today I'll tell you the truth about EV batteries. We'll see how Tesla evolved its battery technology, and why Mercedes-Benz and General Motors also decided to enter and play in the electric sandbox. We'll also look at the solid state battery, Mercedes-Benz silicone battery, and GM's Ultium battery, and whether Tesla will retain its position in the race. Buckle up because we're only just starting. Let's talk about driving range. We'll start out with the battery powered EV that has the best driving range. If you're thinking of a Tesla EV, prepare to be surprised. Teslas do have impressive driving range, but the 2022 Tesla Model S is only the second best thing compared to the reigning EV, which is the 2022 Lucid Air Dream. The 2022 Lucid Air Dream Edition R all wheel drive with 19 inch wheels has a 520 mile driving range. But if you thought that was impressive, get this every single version of the Air has a longer driving range than any other currently available electric car. Even their lowest rated model, which is the high performance Dream P, has a whopping 451 miles of driving range. So now, you're probably wondering, what makes the 2022 Lucid Air Dream so powerful? Well, the Air Dream comes with a 118 kilowatt hour battery pack. The lid of the battery pack flows coolant over the top of the cells. According to Lucid engineers, their solution chills better than Tesla's. The interesting thing is that the Lucid Air Dream is a relatively new car. But Here's the catch. It's price tag. But you have to remember, it's a luxury electric car, not a standard one. You won't see the poor build quality of a standard consumer electric car like Tesla. If you're wondering if you might be able to afford a Lucid Air, that likely means you can't. For example, the 2022 Lucid Air Dream Edition R all-wheel drive cost $169,000, and that's excluding the destination fee. Let's look at the electric car with the worst driving range right now, and that would be the Mazda MX-30 with a driving range of only 100 miles. You see, originally when this EV was first announced, it was slated to have a range extender. The range extender would have been able to take the vehicle up to 200 miles of driving range, but it never happened. Mazda did try to justify this car's driving range. They said the EV's 35.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery helps maintain its superb driving dynamics and allows for lower environmental impact. Basically, it's their best attempt to justify the MX-30's measly driving range. This car's acceleration just isn't up to par with its most powerful rivals. It needs 8.7 seconds to reach 60 miles an hour. If you're wondering how Tesla stocks up, the 2022 Tesla Model S is the battery powered EV with the second best driving range out there. Compared to other EVs, Tesla uses different motors depending on the vehicle. The Model S, for example, has an alternating current induction motor, while the Model 3 uses a permanent magnet DC motor. There are upsides to both types of motors. But generally speaking, induction motors are a little less efficient than permanent magnet motors at full load. What about when it comes to batteries? The first Tesla battery option is the nickel cobalt aluminum or N. NCA. Tesla started using the NCA battery chemistry a while back in the form of 18,650 cells. These were produced by Panasonic for the Model S and the Model X. They also use similar cells in the Model Y and the Model 3, but the size of these cells is a little different. They're 2170 cells. These cells are more energy dense and larger than the 18650 cells. 2170 cells with NCA chemistries are used in the dual motor Model Y and 3 EVs. Interestingly, Tesla started using a second battery battery chemistry in China, and it eventually made its way here to the US. I'm talking about lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, battery cells. LFP cells will be used in all of Tesla's single motor rear wheel drive vehicles. Here in the US, that means that only the base Model 3 will use LFP chemistry. Though it is possible that soon a new Model Y LFP variant will come out too, and there'll be 2170 cells. Last but not least, Tesla's third battery option is the 4680 cell. This is the same cell they have been raving about a few years back as their battery day event. Model Y crossovers that are pumped out of Tesla's new Gigafactory in Austin will be fitted with these 4680 tabless battery cells. And these vehicles will also be the first ever from Tesla to include their structural battery pack. Tesla researchers unveiled a design for a new EV battery that will be able to last for up 100 years, or so they say. The Tesla Advanced Battery Research Division partnered with Dalhousie University in Canada to develop this nickel-based battery. Right now, Tesla manufactures and uses LFP batteries 
use. This battery is what allows a longer range between charges because of its high energy density. Tesla's mission is to build this super battery and may end up reducing manufacturing costs and greatly reduce the footprint of the EV industry at the same time. We'll just have to wait and see. For now, we'll have to stick with Tesla's current batteries that last 200,000 miles or 20 plus years. But remember, all batteries degrade over time. So who knows how much range you'll have left after just five or 10 years. Everything has limits, including batteries. Today, EV battery capacity span from 28.9 kilowatt hours to about 200 kilowatt hours. When you completely deplete a battery down to its very last electron, this can seriously damage it and shorten its life. This is why car makers build in margins. They prevent batteries from discharging completely and from charging right up to 100% capacity. These margins may only be a few percentage points, but boy, do they matter. For example, Porsche reserves just about 10% of their battery's total capacity to protect it from overcharging or completely discharging. Other brands follow a similar pattern, though not all will provide details to us. Batteries are usually the most expensive component of an EV, yet even though these battery prices have fallen the last 10 years, EV prices have not. Since 2012, the average cost of an EV battery fell more than 80%, yet the average price of a brand new EV in the US rose more than 80%. The main reason for this is because most car makers are choosing to develop luxury EV models before they expand into mainstream, cheaper and standard EV options. And on top of all that, factory shutdowns due to the pandemic, the war, and semiconductor chip shortages have added fuel. So car prices are at an all time high. The race for creating better electric car batteries is just being called the next gold rush. Now take a look at IBM's upcoming battery. IBM Research discovered a new battery chemistry that can outperform lithium ion batteries and is free of heavy metals. The materials for these batteries are extracted from seawater. IBM claims that their batteries will charge faster, be cheaper to make, and pack much more energy density and power compared to other battery types. Currently, IBM is working with Mercedes-Benz to develop this technology. Just look at Ford, for example. Ford is planning on spending an extra 10 to 20 billion on top of the 30 billion they've already pledged to spend on EVs all by 2030. While it's great to have a fast, powerful battery in your EV, all EVs have one common need, charging. But if you're the type who doesn't want to wait all night for the EV to charge at home, your next best option is the charging station. The fastest charging option available is level 3 charging. But charging stations don't come without their fair share of disadvantages. When you arrive at a charging station, you might have to wait in line to use a public charger. And once the spot opens up, you still have to wait until your EV charges up. Also, if you're new to an area and not familiar to where the public charging stations are located, it can be really inconvenient and stressful to locate the closest charging station. That won't help with with range anxiety at all. There are three main levels of charging, level one, level two, and three, with level three being the fastest. Slow charges are perfect when you have a lot of time in your hands, but there are fast chargers that can charge your EV in minutes, like the Tesla supercharger. Why do we even need slow ones? Well, not many people realize just how much potential damage a charging station can do to your battery. Constantly using level three fast charging can cause your battery to degrade faster than normal. So I recommend only using rapid charging stations occasionally if you don't want to degrade your car's battery battery prematurely. Now, some people support the idea of a solar powered battery charger since it would technically use 100% green energy. Great for the environment, right? Yes, but not great for your wallet. You see, to fully charge an EV using only the power of the sun, you'd need enough solar panels to connect all that energy, a battery to store that energy, so you can charge at night or after work and a home charger. And this does not come cheap. So, is there another alternative to solar powered charging then? Well, some believe that atomic engines could be the next big thing. After all, theoretically, it would rarely need to be refueled, maybe only once every three to five years. And you'd never even need to turn on the ignition because your nuclear powered car would always be on. But here's why people who think this is the next big thing are wrong. It's radioactive, meaning that an EV with atomic engine would require a lot of shielding. Without proper shielding, the radioactivity of the power source could literally kill any person in and near the car. To understand the future of EV batteries, you just need to look at your iPhone lithium ion batteries are inside every iPhone, iPod, iMac, MacBook, Apple Watch, and AirPods. Yet today's iPhone batteries typically last 24 hours at best. An average iPhone battery is designed to retain 80% of its original capacity at 500 complete charge cycles if it's operating under normal conditions. But the longer you have your phone, the lower the retention percentage gets. And as your battery health degrades, so does its ability to function at peak performance. Since smartphone battery technology 
technology has stalled, instead of fixing the problem, smartphone makers have trained us to just charge our phones every night. No one even questions it. We just accept it. Most people today don't remember this, but there was a time when flip phones were able to run on a single charge for weeks. Will that ever be the same with cars? Instead of progress and innovation, will car companies just train us to accept long charging times and short driving ranges? Who knows? Within a few years, we may end up forgetting how we used to pump gas into a traditional car only two times a month. Let's look at GM's new Altium battery. These batteries have the potential to enable a GM EV's estimated electric range of 450 miles on a full charge. These batteries can also enable their EVs to have energy ranges from 50 to over 200 kilowatt hours. The most important building blocks of these batteries are large scale high energy cells. Together with LG, GM was able to use both smart cell design and advanced chemistry to create the optimal EV battery. And it contains 20 times more energy than Tesla's small cylindrical cells. Right now, Tesla's currently have thousands of battery cells inside their packs. But GM's EVs and other car makers have hundreds. Most importantly, the Ultima Impact does not suffer capacity loss from DC fast charging, which negates the need for slow charging stations. Even Mercedes is getting involved. In the next coming years, expect to see the first Mercedes-Benz test vehicles equipped with solid-state batteries co-produced with Prologium. Having a battery with solid-state electrolytes allows for the use of materials with high ionic conductivity, high storage capacity, and higher chemical stability. The futuristic design of materials used in solid-state batteries can often double the range of a traditional EV lithium-ion battery cell that you find today. But that's not all. Mercedes-Benz is even set to incorporate a new high-energy dense battery in its upcoming electric G-Class starting in 2025. These new batteries are being hailed as a solution to the problem of powering large EVs without overweighing them with heavier batteries. The battery will be made by a startup named Sela Nanotechnologies. It will use silicon-based anodes, and it will be 20 to 40 percent more energy dense than any available cell today. Sila claims they've shattered the energy ceiling of current lithium-ion batteries. Sila's next generation silicon anode chemistry will boost energy density by 20 percent, and in the future, that percentage is expected to go up to 40 percent. But now, you tell me, what's the turning point that will get you to buy an EV? Please comment, subscribe, and see you next time.